I never know how to start these, so let's just start. There's a few questions on this, and you know, every year there's kind of this debate that I have internally, which one should I get? Because I'm on the Apple upgrade program, so I'm going to get an upgrade. It's just, you know, kind of like a lease. You just swap it in every year. But for the last couple of years, you've had basically the same phone in two different sizes. So I got the Max when the 10s Max came out because it was different than the 10. So that was great. I had a big phone. And then the next year I got the iPhone 11 Pro because I was kind of over the huge size. And I really love the 11 Pro size. But now the rumors of what we're seeing with the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, it's a little shaky. Like, is the 12 Pro Max gonna have different features from the 12 Pro? And if that's the case, I'm gonna be tempted to get that 12 Pro Max, even though the 6.7 inch screen sounds huge. But then again, on the flip side, something about that iPhone 12 5.4 inch screen is really enticing. The size of that phone, it's almost like the iPhone SE 2 we were hoping for, but even more. So instead of the iPhone 8 body with just updated specs. It's like a completely new form factor and everything. That's kind of what I was hoping for. And that's kind of what that is. You know, honestly, I have not been using my phone as much lately. I mean, of course I still use it. I use it for YouTube and podcasts and social media, but not nearly as much. My screen time has actually dropped dramatically in the past few months. I'm not really sure what that reason is, but if I don't use my phone quite as much, then there's not as much reason to have a gigantic phablet in my pocket. So I'm kind of up in the air. If the Pro is really enticing, I'm probably gonna go that way, but there's still a little part of me that feels that small little iPhone 12 might be the way to go. So I've been making videos for for a long time and it's been so long that I actually don't remember why I started doing it. All I know is that it was the early days of YouTube and I was watching it and for whatever reason, again, I can't really remember, I decided, you know, I wanna, I wanna try that. I know for sure the inspiration for me at least was a channel called It's Me Morpheus. He would do a bunch of iPhone cases and iPhone reviews and stuff like that. It was back when iPhone cases was really like the big thing in the tech space. And I basically just copied those videos. They were horrible. They were, I mean, disgusting. They were, they were straight up bad videos. But ever since then, I think that was like, what, 2000, like, nine maybe like it's been a long time i have not stopped and of course along the way there's been you know a bunch of changes hopefully my videos <laughs> have started to look better and man it, the question of what video should i make is always ever changing so that, i think that's kind of where i'm going to reach out to you guys the people that watch these videos obviously i can tell which videos people like to watch because of you know the view count and the back end and everything but there's also those videos that i'm interested in like more filmmaking or more car stuff so i'd be interested interested to see what you guys, the people that are actually watching this video, would like to see. Do you want to just see more Apple iPhone videos or is there more that you'd like to see in just general topics? Also another question in that vein, you know, there are other topics, a ton of other ones that I enjoy and I would like to create content on it, but you know, I'm not sure if this is the channel for it. Would you rather see more types of content on this channel or should I just make other channels? Normally this is stuff that goes behind the scenes, but it's been, you know, I've been debating about it for a while and I figured let's put the question out there and see, see what you guys think. But again, it, it's so awesome that people watch these videos and the fact that I've been doing it so long and I haven't quit is really only because people actually watch. <music> This is a bit of a touchy subject, but I, I don't really care about 120 Hertz. Yes, it looks great. I've used it on many devices, the Note 20 Ultra, S20, OnePlus 8 Pro, iPad Pro. I mean, I've used it plenty of times. I use it every single day. And 120 Hertz, there's just no doubt about it. It looks great. But in my experience, and pretty much everyone else that I've asked about this, multiple people, after about a day, probably a week to the max, it really just fades into the background and you don't notice it anymore. If you switch between a really kind of janky screen that's only 60 hertz max and a 120 screen, you start to notice a difference there, like it kind of refreshes your eyes, but even still after using the iPad Pro and phones with 120 hertz, I just don't notice it anymore. And that's not to say I don't want 120 hertz, but if there are drawbacks to it, like battery life or performance hits, or I won't be able to use full resolution, then I, I just don't really care about it that much. I kind of look at 120 hertz the same as 5 
5G, like, yeah, great to have it. I'm not gonna say no to it, but if it means I'm gonna get a worse experience for a feature that honestly doesn't change the way I use the phone, then I'm okay with it not being there. That being said, Apple definitely should include it because I mean, it's 2020, 2021 when the iPhone cycle is going. So it should just be able to have it. And you know, the tech limitations, obviously, you know, other companies have overcome them. So it's possible. There's a bunch of rumors on why Apple may not be including it, even though now it seems like they might be, I don't know, it's all complicated. I hope we see it. If it is, then great. But if it isn't, again, not a big deal to me. But if you're looking to buy the phone, I don't think this is the one feature that you have been waiting for. Like I'm telling you, it looks great, but it fades away really quickly. Man, 2020 is a crazy year for cameras. It's always hard to know, should I buy a camera now or should I wait before, you know, there's always gonna be better options. But that, that's the ever eternal question for really anything. Should you wait or should you get it now? But if I had to choose two cameras right now, no mind to budget or, you know, practicality or like what I actually need, just cameras that I actually want, I would choose the C500 from Canon and I would choose the Sony a7S III. It's kind of funny because, you know, you think if I'm choosing this Canon cinema camera, then I would choose the Canon, you know, mirrorless, more on the go camera. But man, I'm a little iffy on the Canon issues right now. Even though I do have a Canon R5 on order, I also have an a7S III on order, so we'll see, battle it out, which one actually happens. I swear these companies do it on purpose. They make the almost perfect camera, but they have a few little issues in there. So really, those are the ones that I would have as a dream, but they're not actually the ones that I'm gonna buy. And we'll talk about that probably in another video. <music> Speaking of a7S III, the more I look at this camera, the more excited I get. The reason I'm hesitant on it is because I don't have unlimited money to just buy whatever cameras I want and companies don't just send cameras, at least to me. So I have to be very particular about which ones I actually buy and I would be all in on the a7S III if the megapixels were a bit higher for photography. Now I know the reason they're so low so that you get the great low light, I'm totally cool with that. It's just I can't dedicate or fully dedicate to that camera as my main photography camera slash on the go lightweight camera because of that low megapixel count. Now for the most part, it doesn't really matter, but I do do photography pretty often and I just don't have the luxury of being able to have like six different cameras. So I'm looking for that one that is the perfect one. But compared to like the R5 or the a7S III, for me personally, the a7S III is calling my name a little bit more, which is surprising me because I kind of went away from Sony, but they actually fixed all the things that I had complaints with. So we'll see. Again, who knows what camera I'm gonna get. So foldable displays are very fun and interesting. And it'd be interesting to see what Apple did with that kind of tech. And if I had to choose between that or 5G, personally right now, at least in 2020 or coming up 2021, I would choose a folding display because 5G in its current iteration of what we're going to get, and we're supposedly gonna see that in the new iPhone, it's gonna have both versions. So millimeter wave, which is the crazy fast version that you, know, you can download 2000 megabits per second, and it's just insane. Insane. And you also have the sub six, which is kind of like a better version of LTE. That's very, you know, plain and dumbed down, but that's kind of the way to think of it. Well, the millimeter wave is kind of garbage right now. Yes, it exists. Yes, it technically works, but you have to be in very specific areas. You have to be standing in a very specific spot and we've tested it. It just, it just doesn't work as quite as advertised or at least as you'd hope it would. Now sub six, that is actually blanketed everywhere where I live right now and I can use it and I have used it and it's fine. It's fast, it's good, but it's not really any different than LTE. It doesn't provide me anything different. So at least today, I'll go with the foldable because I've used the Galaxy Fold extensively. I owned one until I just sold it because the new one's coming out. So there's a bunch of other foldables coming out on the market. I love them. They are fun and they're actually useful and they give you something different. 5G, at least right now, is more of the same. Foldables are new, so foldable all the way. All right, I think that's enough questions for this time. Uh, I never know how to end these things either, so 